M1008 Cuck V Project Part 5. See that right there? That is the fuel filter for one of these things here. And I'm going to replace it with something very nice, which is much nicer probably than the original one. But it's going to be temporary, even still. Because I like the original one. It lets me know when there's water in the fuel and there's also a heater on that uh, filter base. So that's nice. I'm in New England. As you can see, I've already taken the lines off and just tied them together, bypassed it. No filter whatsoever. Just run that dirty diesel, dirty biodiesel. Uh, but I already have the new filter and I'm about to show you what we got. And I'll tell you why I chose the one I did. All right, so here it is. This is a Raycor fuel filter. I got this because, yes, it has a water separator, so that is a nice feature. But what I really like is the primer pump. All right, now see, the original one had a little bleeder screw, and you could, you know, using the engine crank, you could prime that filter up. This one here, you kind of fill the filter up, screw it on, but then you got the primer. A little bleeder screw and a primer. That's one reason I liked it. The other reason is because I don't have to fabricate a mount for this temporary fix. This one actually mounts up real nice to the original bolts, those two bolts. Boink, boink. All right, so before we actually slap this thing into our cup V, we want to put on some of these little tips. Do not use any of that tape when you put these together, all right? Make sure you get some of that thread sealant. PTFE, all right? Get this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. Now on this one, you can have input, input, output, output, or, or you can plug one side and just have an input and an output, which is how I'm gonna do it. Because that's how the original was. It was both on one side. So this came with some plugs. We're gonna put them in here with some sealer. Then I'm gonna put my chips in here and we'll take it from there. All right, so here's the little plugs that came with the filter assembly and you'll need the appropriate Allen key to screw those in. Just put a little sealer on them, plug it up. And that is that go all right that side you get your little connectors and this side we just plugged it up and this is all the tools and stuff you need to do it right there there's a little close-up view it's gonna take these three bolts out just nine sixteenths now get yourself a little nine sixteenths ratchet pop those right out of there i'm gonna take the whole thing off before i disconnect it you don't need to pop that filter off first either it's just gonna dump fuel everywhere and there's no way to really stop it all right all right well with that pulled down out of the way unscrewed from there you can see the three connections that you gotta pull right there two black disconnectors and the one white one right here pull it apart and that thing will come right out of there for you all right now that you got those three things disconnected you can reach right in there and just snatch that whole unit right out of there bring it with you all right there it is done big old mess there now that's something you want to keep keep the original here I'm gonna rebuild this that'll be a whole nother video now really you can just put this in I'm gonna throw a couple washes on each side just to have it stick out a little bit off my firewall and I'll show you why all right so you can see your two little screw holes right there okay that's I'm gonna mount this to but down below you can see right there that colorful set of wires sticking out okay well, what happens is you can't really flush mount the filter see look i'll put that in there I'll put the screws line up nice but it's not going to sit straight up and down it's going to be slightly just a slight little bit of a all right so you can't crank these down or you'll, or you'll pinch those wires in there so i'm going to throw a couple washes and just pull that out off the firewall a little bit you can't go too much because the screws are too short. The original screws, they won't let you do that. So that's where we're at. I'm going to put it in real quick and then just hook it up. And boom, there it is. I mean, simple as that, right? Now that nipple toward me is your intake and the nipple toward the back is the output. So now I just got to finagle some hose up and uh, make it fit nicey-nicey. I got all the connections ready to go. Oops, sidetracked. Took off, ran down in the store real quick, and on the way back, I felt a vibration. A very familiar vibration. I felt it before. The U-joint, and you know what? It's kind of my fault. I just uh, 
disconnected the U-joint and tied it up for when I towed it home from Pennsylvania. And then when I put it back in, what I should have done after driving it a little bit was get under there and check the bolts. And I didn't, and I also did not use any kind of Loctite. I was in a hurry to just take it for a test run. I forgot all about it. My own fault, bolts came loose enough to lose a cap which means losing your needle bearings, which means I'm sidetracked now. I had to run in and order pots and tools to be able to do this job myself. And uh, while I wait, back to the filter we go. And just like that, we are all done. Just give you a little shot of what we got here. So it's obviously the uh, filter itself, the filter body is bolted right into the original holes with the original screws so through a couple of two washers back there behind it just to give it a little lift out All right and then i got the little 3 8 nipples coming off one of them i got a converter brings it from 3 8 down to uh, i think that was a quarter inch and then this one doesn't need to because it's 3 8 all the way down but what i did put is one of those little valves there to keep the fuel from washing backwards into the tank so pretty simple. Now what you can do is before screwing this filter on, you can fill that up with some diesel, save yourself some pumping. Uh, I didn't because this came all together and I was like, eh, and you want to pull it off. So I'm going to just see what happens, how many pumps it takes to bleed one of these when it's dry. What the hell, right? We're here. Might as well do it. I could do the easy thing, but I'm not going to. I want to know how many licks, how many pumps. And the answer is 75. All right, so that screw right there, yoink, right there, you take that out completely. It's a plug. It's not just a bleeder screw. It's a plug. So take it out, and then 75 pumps total. You should see it squirt come out that little screw hole. Plug it up. That's it. Now, really, technically, I could just leave this and just run this like this forever. But now I got a little side project, and that is to rebuild the original. I want the original in here. And then I'll just kind of keep that guy there, just in case. All right, quick swap, no problem. Let's see if this thing runs. <laughs> By the way, while I'm here, check it out. New locks, because not a lot of people know this, and I didn't want to say it before, that you got one key to one of these, and you got a key to all of these. That includes the ignition. So I swapped out my door locks, swapped out my ignition. You should do the same if you get one of these. All right. Also, keep the keys, the original keys, because like I said, you got the key to one, you got the key to all of them. All right, let's see how this thing goes. A little bit of glow plug. Oh, okay. you so that is it there is my spin on filter modification if you dig it do it yourself it's pretty simple it's better than you know making brackets and things like that and you know a lot of people trying to make brackets and stuff I just I'm not into it for something that I'm gonna use temporarily but again even if you want to keep that permanently it don't look bad it's got the water separating and also you'll see the water if there's something there you just you know, unscrew that bottom uh, bleeder and pump the hand pump. It's going to pump that water out, you know. It's nice. So I'd say on to the next thing and leave it open to what the next thing is. But we already know. It's my drive shaft. So I'll see you for that. That should be a quick and easy one, I hope. Uh, other than that, I guess uh, we'll talk to you later. Yes. Ah.